Now, when the Anasaza came, the principal economy, of course, was slave trade. The Dene were very numerous, and so it was they left them alone. When our Dene traded with the Anasaza, there are two main stories that are told. It was at the very end of the encounter with the Anasaza, after that they were completely destroyed, one of the leaders is the last one, and the holy people turned him into an arrow, and the Navajo man then puts him in a bow and then shoots him to the south, high up into the sky. In the traditional teaching of our people, in the winter time, during the time when winter stories are told and the oral history is uh, repeated, it was uh, something that would not happen just one time. It seemed like there was a lot of time that uh, our people were together during those uh, winter months. And so it was that you would a be able to hear the stories and that many times. And this was before there were other things to distract you, television and iPhones and uh, iPads and these types of things. And it was that the people came together as families and that, and they would share these stories. And so after a period of time, of course, now that nowadays that does not happen as it used to. And so the oral history and the traditional stories and that are being lost. And it seems like very few people know the uh, correct information as they've heard it so many times in the past when they were very young. And so we share this information with you. Is a very important thing. They say that we must learn about the past of our people and the things that they experienced and the things that they learned from these experiences. And so one of the things that uh, is very important to know is the encounter with the many different people that uh, are early than way back 2,000 years ago when they came and encountered all of these different people. Some of them, many of them, became Dene themselves. And all of the different uh, clan families and that, they maintained their own clan groups and they kind of maintained their own ways of dealing with each other and their clan families. And so it was that uh, as a peaceful society, they helped one another. Now when the uh, Anasaza came, it was a very later uh, time period. And as I mentioned, they were only here for a short time. And these people, their principal economy, of course, was slave trade. And the Dene were very numerous. And so it was that the uh, uh, Anasazi people did not care really to antagonize the uh, Dene. And so it was they left them alone. And they didn't make any slaves of the people that were of the Dene clans. And so when our Dene communicated and traded with the Anasaza, there are two main stories in that that are told. But there are other stories in that that uh, we are told as far as how we uh, got along with the uh, Anasaza people. We are told that our people used to trade with them. And since they were a slaving society, our people would trade with them and sometimes they would trade for a slave. And when our people took that slave and purchased that slave, after four days in the traditional way, they would put a necklace on them. Is the way that they used to tell it. And everything is that after they acquired that person as a slave, as a trade item, and were dealing with the Anasaza, after four days they would adopt that person into their clan. And so that person would be, become a member of their clan family. And so it was, this happened many, many, many times. And one of the stories in that about the uh, purchasing of slaves and uh, trying to uh, free these people from slavery is in the story told about the gambler. It's very important to understand, even the Dene are losing sight of the, there are two people that are key in this particular story. Down through the years, the people telling the story sometimes get confused, and they don't know how to separate the two people that actually competed against each other in the gambler story. One is the one an Asaza, and the other is Dene. Uh, be of course, is the one that's Dene. That means to win you back, uh, as the other one. That is the one that actually wins you into his captivity. As uh, the two words, Nahospi is one, Nahospi is the other. And so it is very important to understand the two different gamblers in that that were face off with each other in that setting of the story. The story goes that there was one Dene 
that saw a, a bunch of uh, slaves on that that he wanted to free. So he put, uh, he challenged the leader of the Anasaza to a game of chance, and the games were rigged against him, and so the Anasaza leader would win. And so all of the things that he put out to, uh, as gambling items and that, was won. And then pretty soon he started taking his family members and eventually family clan members, and he was losing left and right until he himself. He says, I take me. Since I've gambled away all of my goods and all of my family, he said, take me. So the uh, Anasaza gambler won him and put him into slavery. But all of the Dene families and that, clan families and that, felt sorry for him. And so they got together and they selected one young medicine man, very young. He had a beautiful wife. And so he took that wife and he told the Anasaza gambler, he says, this is uh, what I'm going to put up to play this game with you. If I win, I get my relatives back. At, uh, so it was that they outlined how they were going to play the game. And the beautiful wife of this medicine man, young medicine man, was put up for uh, a gaming token. The holy people helped this young man. Nahospi is what he was called. And he started to win back with the help of the holy people in all of the different games that the Anasaza leader wanted to uh, play. And so he eventually won all of the families back, and he won back all of the clan groups and that that were gambled away and uh, freed all those people. And so it is that that is one of the stories. And then the other story is at the very end of the telling of the uh, encounter with the Anasaza, after that they were completely destroyed, one of the leaders of the Anasaza is the last one. And the holy people turned him into an arrow, and an Navajo man then puts him in a bow and then shoots into the south, high up into the sky. And there's a lot of symbolism in that involved in that particular encounter, is that they sent him into the next world, and they could have very well shot him with an arrow. And that is the only time that the Dene actually took the time to encounter the Anasaza to actually slay. Uh, the leaders and that that uh, had been living among the Dene for so long, but that's the only place. But the other stories in that associated with the Dene is that uh, they got a name from the Anasaza people. In the language of the Anasaza, the name is uh, Anabeho, and that's the way that it was originally pronounced. And it's a, uh, a word that the uh, was the name that was uh, the Dene were called for many years. And uh, even after the Anasaza were completely destroyed, there were many people that still referred to our people, Anabeho, and saying the field people, Anabeho, is always has been the word that has been taught to our people. And the last uh, that I heard in, in actual public uh, address, were at the uh, various ceremonies and that sometimes our old people would be allowed to give a, uh, a short talk. And since they did not have sound system back in those days, the old people would yell and they would say something like, uh, You would always hear the old people would introduce themselves and then they would tell who we are as relatives and what we are called. And so it was very important for them to carry on the name that was given to us by the Inasaza, and they would say, And I hope that so many of our older people can remember that. When there was no sound system and our old people would talk, that's how they would tell the story of the uh, name, Anabeho, and what the Inasaza people called us. And the uh, word actually is based on the traditional teaching of our people. When our young children got to be a certain age, most of the time they say it was eight years old, they would begin to receive instruction about life. And this is a symbol for Dene, this clockwise spiral. And our fields were constructed in that clockwise spiral. That mark is found on the top of the head where the hair grows in that spiral. It's found on the fingertips. And all of the different things that we have in our uh, traditional settings our hogans, our sweat lodge, and everything is done based on that particular thing. And the word in our language is dak eh, and that means akilyeh, 
is to say that it comes from one point and it goes around and it's layered. And that was the uh, original name of Da'ke. And Da'ke is has a lot of teaching of that associated with the um, fundamental laws of life. The um, spirit, when it enters this physical form that we are, it enters here at the top of the head like a, uh, a whirlwind in a clockwise direction. And when that spirit enters, then we take our first breath and we let out a cry. And so, because we told our children when we were teaching them, you are a field. And from you comes generation and generation of the neh. And so that's the teaching that was given to uh, young children. And so because we taught our children in that way, then our Saza would refer to our Dene as Anabeho, which meant field people, because we were telling our children, you are a field. And so that is the teaching of that, and of how the name came to be uh, given to us as Anabeho. Now when the Spaniards arrived, our people of course tried to discourage the Spaniards from coming among our people. And so when the Spaniards encountered the Dene, which was offering them great resistance, they wanted to know who are these people that come and raid our settlements and carry off our property. They were told, those are Anabejo. And so they gave it the Spanish pronunciation and spelling and it came out Navajo. And as I mentioned in past uh, presentation, the original way that the word Navajo was spelled for many years was N-A-V-A-H-O. And then in some time in the future, of course, in the past history, it became a J. So many people now spell it N-A-V-A-J-O. And so that's the story about our encounter with the uh, Anasaza. And Anabejo is a Anasaza word, which means field people. In the traditional teaching of our people, it is impossible to have slaves and to be able to walk in beauty and to have joy, happiness, confidence, and peace in life if you own another person and make them be slaves to you. That is not possible at all. And so one of the things that uh, caused the separation of our people into different groups that moved away was one of the things is because of slavery. Some clan families decided that slavery was acceptable. And so they began to purchase a slave and then they would make them slave and keep them slaves in their clan families. And when they tried to do that, they became very unacceptable as a clan family. And eventually they moved away, far away. And so they speak the language of our people in some ways, but they became a separate person or a group of people, a separate clan family entirely, because they accepted the idea that slavery was acceptable. And to this day, it is that our people do not believe in uh, the idea of, of having slaves and the purchasing of people and having them become a part of the Dene by putting a beads on them and adopting them was very acceptable. And it was a form of probably the very earliest form of uh, what you could consider the Underground Railroad. Our Dene did purchase people from slave traders and they set them free. And that is part of the traditional teachings of our people. And as I mentioned in the past uh, presentation that there are some people that were probably Pueblo that became Dene themselves at some later date, and there are names on that, of clans on that, that actually have reference to the uh, people that were Puebloan at one time. And Ayakindandinde uh, is what we are told, that they were Pueblo people. And these are the stories that we are told, and we try to preserve it the very best we can, and there are some people that are still alive that have heard these stories. And so we share this information with you, and do we do it the way that we were told? And that's what I was told. Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. I can't.